Hi, my name is Chris, and I just can't stop making things. Today I'm going to show you how to make a lightweight, super good looking proton pack from a foam floor mat, some plumbing pipes, and a bunch of hot glue. And some other stuff. Alright, first you want to grab the pattern off my website and print it out. Just make sure that when you print it, it prints out at actual size. This is super important because by default your printer will probably want to scale it down a little bit. And that would be bad. Print it out and take it upstairs to a nice big window. Tape the papers together making sure to line up the alignment crosses and also making sure not to make any rude gestures. The reason I'm doing it on a window is because it makes the paper more see-throughable, which is helpful. Check the print guides with an Australian ruler just to make sure it did print actual size. Get out your favorite scissors and start cutting. Now there's a bunch of pieces to cut out inside the back plate, but we'll wait to cut them out until after the back plate is traced. When you're cutting, cut right up to the line, but don't remove the line. Just get nice and close. You should end up with a nice pile of paper. Now get an EVA foam floor mat from the sky. It's important for this pattern that the EVA foam is 6 or 7 millimeters thick, otherwise things aren't going to work out that great. Roll out your foam and do a little hula hoop trick. If your foam doesn't want to stay flat, an easy tip are some leg weights from a thrift store or out of your box of giant kites. Trace the back plate piece onto the foam. I would recommend using a fine tipped paint pen because ink pens can bleed through the paint later on. I guess now would be a good time to mention that little sticky outy bit where the arrow's pointing, that actually doesn't exist in the final pattern. So don't be surprised if you don't see it. Now that the back plate is traced, cut out what I like to call the speech bubble, and that includes that little tab at the bottom. Trace the speech bubble and then cut out the cyclotron pan from inside that. Now you can trace all the rest of your pattern pieces onto the foam. Some of the pieces need to be traced twice, with one of them flipped over. So I'll mark those pieces with a B after their number. If there's a dotted line, it means you don't cut it now, but something's gonna have to happen to it later. This one's gonna get a V cut on the backside, so I'll draw the line to remind me. I'll also make a little go around to the back arrow, so I don't get confused and cut on the front. There's also some dotted lines on pieces 20 and 21. So trace the rectangles first, then cut on the dotted lines, and then trace on the dotted lines. The bottom edge of piece 21 needs to be cut at an angle, so I added some cut at an angle marks. Here's a look at most of the pattern pieces laid out on the foam. There's a couple more I added later, and a few longer strips as well yet to come. Now grab a super sharp knife and start cutting, directly on top of the lines you drew. I find it works better to do a few cuts on the same line rather than trying to cut all the way through in one slice. Oh, and don't cut your fingers off. Don't forget to cut the bottom edge of piece 21 with your blade angled in at about 45 degrees. In fact, you can use piece 19 as a guide to help you start off at the right angle. All the rest of the edges you want to cut nice and square, and you can use an Australian ruler to verify that you are cutting square. For cutting tighter corners, a number 11 scalpel comes in very handy. You'll also need a sheet or two of 2mm thick craft foam as well. I'm using Cosplay Apprentice's What the Foam, because it's fantastic. Okay, now it's time to put things together. We'll start with the crank generator. I've divided it into three sections, the big box, the little box, and the hallway. Start by marking and cutting the V-groove on the back of the two piece fives. You're basically aiming for the V-groove to go a little more than halfway through the foam, with the bottom point of the V ending up directly underneath the line. That means you'll start the cut a couple millimeters on either side of the line and have your blade angled in towards the line. This gives you a nice corner that's kind of rounded but not too rounded. Give it a little squeeze. Now I'm going to be using hot glue to put this together, and for the glue to stick well to the side of the foam that has the texture on it, the foam needs to be sanded with some coarse sandpaper. In fact, any time on this video when I'm gluing the textured side of the foam, assume I've had to sand it first. Glue piece 4 onto the back of piece 5, lining up the top edges and holding it down until the glue cools. Apply some glue in the V-groove and just beside it, bend it up to a 90 degree angle and hold it in place. And then do it all again for the second one. Now it's time to glue the sides on the big box. It's important to know where the top is because one end angles in a bit, so maybe mark that. Sand along the top edges of the sides, piece 2 and 2B, and the underside of the piece you made earlier. Now you can glue one of the sides onto one of the ends, starting in the corner and working your way out. I find the best way to use hot glue is to glue a short section at a time and hold it together until it cools. Once it's cooled, move on to the next section. 
I recommend using a glue gun with variable temperature. That way you can turn it down as low as possible and the glue doesn't take near as long to cool. That means less time holding things together. Not to mention there will be way less burning of fingers. Speaking of fingers, you'll see that I often wipe away the excess glue with mine. That's because I'm keeping my glue temperature low and waiting till it's cool enough before I wipe it. I'd recommend using a scrap piece of foam to do the same thing. It's safer and, well, it's safer. Now glue the other side and you should end up with a box with a hole on the top. If you want to make your glue seams look really pretty, grab a scrap of foam and start rubbing like crazy. The friction warms up the glue a bit and helps it kind of peel away. Another option is to use the side of your glue gun to melt the glue till it's nice and smooth. Next add piece number three to fill in that hole from behind. So squeeze a little bit of glue near the top of the sides as well as along the edges of the inside top pieces. Piece three goes inside and make sure it's nice and flush with those top edges. A bit of foam scrubbery to clean up the mess we made. And boom, crank generator big box is done. Of course, no crank generator is complete without a little box. So mark those V-cuts on the back side of piece 7, and then V-cut the V-cuts. Some glue in the cuts and hold them at a right angle until they cool. Glue a piece 6 in place to make one side of the box, starting with one of the inside corners and working your way around. Do your best to line everything up so the edges are nice and flush. Depending on how you made your V-cuts, you may need to stretch or compress the foam on the sides to get it to line up with the edges. Once one side's done, do the exact same thing with your second piece number 6, and that should leave you with a little box. A crank generator box. Okay, to connect the two pieces together, we're gonna need a hallway. And yes, if you're wondering, I am making up a lot of these technical sounding names. So V-cuts and glue at right angles, and position it on the side of the big box. One of the edges of the big box angles in slightly towards the top. If you keep that edge to the right when you're looking at the box, then you should be lining the hallway up with the left edge. With the left edge glued, you can square up the other edge and trace it. That'll make it way easier to line up when you're gluing it down. Now we just need to glue the hallway to the little box. That way, all the things in the big box can get to the little box through the hallway without having to go outside and maybe getting their hair wet in the rain. As you'll notice, the little box gets lined up with the inside edge of the hallway, protruding past the hallway on the other side. If everything went right, the crank box should fit right over top of those two sticky outy sections on the back plate. If you want rounded edges on your crank box, you can use a rotary tool, a grinding wheel, and a lot of patience to get that look. This technique works better the higher density foam that you're using, and you have to play around a bit with the speed and pressure of your grinding wheel. Also, make sure you're wearing lung protection so you don't breathe in that foam dust and die. Next up are pieces 9, 10, and 11. Glue piece 9 to piece 10, and piece 11 lined up over top of piece 9 and 10. Now it's time to make the power cell support box. So glue the two piece 13s to each end of piece 12. Then add the two piece 14s to the other sides to finish off the box. Pieces 15, 16, and 17 are gonna make up the power cell. On piece 15, one side is a little wider than the other and that's gonna stay to the outside. So make sure you have it lined up right before you start gluing. Glue the top side of the front in place first and then the side. You'll notice that the front extends down past the side and that's good because that's what we want. The power cell sits on the bottom left corner of the power cell support box, so hold it tightly in place and trace the slot. Widen those lines a little bit and cut it out. Find a couple translucent folders that no one seems to be using, save the red one for later and cut a little strip off the blue one. Glue the strip over the hole in the power cell support box. Then you can glue the power cell in its appropriate position. This needs to be done relatively quickly because you're gluing three different sides all at the same time and you don't want the glue to cool before you get it in place. I turned the temperature up on my glue gun for this to give me a little extra time to work before it all cooled. Now use the circles on piece 17 as a template to cut all the way through into the support box. Use piece 17 again on the other end of the box, tracing just the top circle. We're going to cut a hole here so the pipe can go all the way through and be supported at this end as well. Speaking of pipes, you better go buy one at your local hardware store. The pipe I used is 1 inch PVC conduit. 
One inch is the diameter of the inside hole, so the outside of the pipe is actually more around 33 and a half millimeters. I'm gonna cut the pipe 39 centimeters long. And to help me get a nice flat cut, I'm gonna wrap pattern piece 16 around the pipe. Once you have the overlapping edges lined up perfectly, that means you have a perpendicular line all the way around. I used my jeweler's saw with a wax cutting blade to cut the line around the pipe until I had cut through. A miter saw would probably be a lot easier, but I actually really like using my jeweler's saw. In fact, I have a video about all the great things you can do with a jeweler's saw. Check out the link in the description. Sand the end of the pipe nice and smooth. From one end of the pipe, make a mark at 11 and half centimeters and one at 22. Along a straight line between those two marks, add some more marks and space them about one centimeter apart. Drill on each of those marks with a four millimeter drill bit and slide the conduit into the power cell. Now, if you drop a glow stick in the top of the pipe, it'll shine through all the holes and look like a bunch of little lights. Fantastic. Now cut a second piece of pipe 20 centimeters long, push it through the bottom hole until the front edges line up. Drill a hole through both pipes near the power cell and screw the two pipes together. Repeat the process again closer to the end of the pipes. You want the screw to reach almost all the way through the second pipe because that will stop the glow stick from falling out the end. Now take it all apart again, countersink the holes you drilled, and rub down the PVC pipe really well with a Scotch-Brite pad. This will help the paint stick way better when it's time to paint. Now put it all back together and screw it and glue it into place. Next we're gonna make the ramp. And we'll start that off with a nice little V-cut on the back side of piece 21. The cut can be a little narrower on this one because it doesn't have to bend all the way to a right angle. And the front edge should already be cut at an angle from when you cut it out. Glue piece 20 along the not angled edge of piece 21, which should allow piece 19 to snuggle right in there perfectly. Glue the long edges of piece 19 and 19B to the back of the ramp, and then the short edge along the top. Glue in the V-cut and hold it in place till it cools. Glue down the remaining angled edges, and extend the cutout line along the one side. Cut out the 45 degree angle template, wrap it around a piece of one inch pipe, line up the edges, and trace the angle. Cut along the line with your handy jeweler's saw, or of course, you can use a miter saw. And spend an unreasonable amount of time sanding your cut smooth. Mark and cut the pipe 77 millimeters along the longest edge. Give it a roll on a Scotch-Brite pad, and you've got one of these. Now you can cut along your bonus cut lines on the ramp piece. The important thing here is making sure that your knife blade stays parallel to the flat top and bottom of the ramp. You don't want to cut in perpendicular to that angled ramp section. You might also need to cut just a little bit of an angle on that outside edge. And your little piece of tube should fit in there perfectly. Glue the angled edge of your piece of tube down onto some 2mm craft foam. Once it's cool, try cutting out the foam following the angle of the pipe edge as best you can. Mine turned out a little bit rough, so I smoothed it out with a rotary tool and a grinding burr. Glue it down onto the ramp and fill the back hole with a piece 44. Glue the front of the ramp down onto the power cell support box. Once that front edge is cool, try to glue down the entire inside edge of the ramp. It's a little bit tricky, which is why this video isn't showing it very well. Once that's done, you can glue the outside edge of the ramp, which is a heck of a lot easier. Now all that's left to do is plug up the holes on the end of the pipes with a piece 44 covered by a piece 18. We're giving it a bit of extra strength here because there's going to be a wire coming out of it eventually. Finish it off with a bit of messy glue around the ends to make it look a bit like a welding bead. Okay, next up is what I like to call the grain elevator, because it kind of reminds me of a grain elevator. We'll start with a V-cut on the back of piece 24, and a V-cut on the front. Then glue piece 22 and 22B onto piece 23. Apply glue in the front V-cut and hold it in place until it cools. Do the same thing with the V-cut on the back as well. And now you can glue piece 24 to the rest of the grain elevator, topping off the top with piece 25. Okay, now it's time to take our speech bubble and make it go 3D. So grab piece 27 and pretend it's kind of like a ruler, using it to mark out two strips that run the entire width of the foam sheet, which is around four feet. Line up piece 27 with the end of one of the strips and mark all the cut lines. Apparently I called them V-cuts on the pattern here, which they aren't actually. They're just regular vertical cuts. 
Maybe that's what the V stands for. Now do the same thing with the second strip as well. The only difference between the two strips is they end up being different lengths. So measure 28 centimeters past the last cut line for strip A and 48 centimeters for strip B. Okay, now you want to make those vertical cuts, but you don't want them to go all the way through the foam. So grab some unbranded gift cards, place them on either side of the strip, and cut down through the foam until the gift cards stop you from cutting. And when you're done cutting, you should have a sore finger and something that looks a bit like this. The long strip is going to start at the edge strips meet here mark and get glued section by section to the speech bubble. You want to make sure the flat sections of the strip stay lined up with the flat sections of the speech bubble. Trim away any extra edge strip that goes past the corner. Now grab the shorter edge strip and starting from the same place, go the opposite direction until you meet up with the other strip. Glue the strips together, making sure they stay nice and square. You should still have some foam left over from making your speech bubble side strips. Cut one of those pieces down to 63 centimeters and make a ring. This ring is gonna add some extra support inside the speech bubble. Try and get it nice and centered. Okay, now let's make a cyclotron pan to go on top of our speech bubble. Cut a strip the width of the cyclotron pan side piece and 63 centimeters long. Glue it to the cyclotron pan, lining up the edge of the strip with the edge of the cutout. When you've glued about three quarters of the way around, match the other end of the strip to the other edge of the cutout, and then go back and finish gluing the rest. If you want a rounded edge on your cyclotron pan, grab your rotary tool and get rotary in. Of course, no cyclotron would be complete without lights to show you that it's cyclotroning. So mark the center of the cyclotron pan holes on the speech bubble. Grab an old flashlight with LEDs in it and take it all apart until you just have the LEDs. Add wires to four of the LEDs and wire them all together. LEDs only light up when the electricity is going a certain way through them, so make sure you figure that out before you do this. Also, I don't really know very much about electronics, I'm just kind of making this up. So you might want to do a bit of your own research. Once the lights are working, you can wire them up to your battery pack. Grab a jar of peanut butter and use it as a raised cutting board, so you can punch some 4mm holes for your LEDs to peek through. Once everything's working, glue it all down so it doesn't move around. Now the lights are actually supposed to be red, but mine are kinda blue. So I'm gonna take that red folder and glue some pieces on top of the bulbs. That's a bit better. Grab your peanut butter jar and use it to make a hole in the center of your backplate. This is to give access to the electronics and to have a place to store the battery pack. It's finally time to start putting all the pieces together. We're gonna glue them together from the back side, keeping those back edges nicely lined up with each other. So start with the piece that goes around the cyclotron, then add the power cell. It's always a good idea to start gluing in the corners and working your way out. Glue the crank generator to the side of the power cell and then glue the other edge. Set the whole thing down on the back plate and line it up perfectly. Start gluing around the bottom edge of the cyclotron, lining up the flat faces with the flat edges of the back piece. Once that's glued down, you want to make sure everything else is going to fit properly on the back plate. So you might have to kind of push the foam into the place you want it. Once it looks good, mark along the edge of piece 9 so you can line it up while you're gluing. Flip it over and start gluing, working your way from the bottom up to the top. I found it worked best to glue a small section from the back, then flip it right side up so I could press down nice and firmly on a flat surface while the glue cooled. The one place where it's a little bit different is the front of the power cell, where it butts up to the edge of the back plate rather than sitting on top of it. And there we go, it's kind of starting to look like a proton pack. So to celebrate, go to the hardware store and buy some 2 inch ABS pipe. Cut 3 pieces of that pipe, one 6 centimeters long, one 9 centimeters long, and one that's 24 centimeters long with a 45 degree angle on one end. Glue piece 30 on top of the 9 centimeter pipe, give it a nice scrub, and wrap piece 31 around the bottom, gluing as you go. Hopefully, by the time you get all the way around, those two ends will line up perfectly. Do the same thing with strip 32 around the top. Wrap the pattern strip for piece 32 centered in the area of the pipe that's not covered with foam, and use a pointy tool of some kind to mark the center of each circle. 
Drill a small pilot hole on each mark and then grab a 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter drill bit and carefully drill out all the holes. This is the filter and it's going to get glued into the nice little cutout in the cyclotron pan. Make sure those edges are glued nice and vertical. Glue the cyclo pan down starting with the bottom of the filter and then working your way around. It's handy you have a line there to know where it should go. Glue piece 18 on top of piece 30, scrub up the 6 cm pipe and glue that cap on top. And that all gets glued on the side of the crank generator. My red folder was a little bit too opaque, so I found a sheet of reddish clearish plastic to cover the holes on the cyclotron. I used pattern piece 42 to get circles the right size. A handy tip, make sure there's no fingerprints on the back side, cause you can never clean those things off. Get out some black acrylic paint and give the cyclotron light washers three good coats. Of course letting it dry in between each coat. By the end you should have a nice piece of art to hang up on your wall. Cut a piece of foam the width of piece 45 and 72 centimeters long. Cut a little curve into the end to match the filter and glue the strip all the way around the cyclotron pan. At the other end, cut off the excess and match that curve again. Glue two piece 44s on the top of the ramp. Make a stack out of piece 34 and 35 and another stack out of pieces 37, 38 and 36. And those get glued on the speech bubble here and here. With the paint dried we can put our rings around our lights now too. Now it's time to cut a bunch of strips the width of piece 46, but way longer. Use the faint dotted lines on pattern piece 5 to determine the spacing of the strips on the crank generator, and the dotted line on piece 46 to mark how far over they're gonna go. Now glue the strips in place starting at the top and trimming them off flush with the bottom when you get there. Use the marks on the bottom of piece 5 for the bottom of the crank generator and cut a bunch of little rectangles to glue on there. And some more strips on the little box of the crank generator. These ones overlap a bit farther at 3.4 centimeters. There's a strip at the front that gets cut flush where it meets the one going the other way. The power cell gets some strips too. The only tricky bit is the back strip. It needs to be cut in a sort of L shape so it'll fit against the box. Cut a piece of 1 inch PVC the same length as piece 47, sand the ends smooth, make the outside rough, and glue it down in the center gap of the crank generator. And glue piece 47 right up against it. Take piece 48, punch out a 12mm disc, glue them together and glue them on the crank generator. I guess that's the crank. I kind of expected something a little bigger. Make a stack of pieces 39, 40 and 41, grab your 2 inch ABS that's cut at an angle, apply glue into the flat end and then slide in the stack you just made. You want it to sit a little bit lower than the edge of the tube. Apply glue generously to the bottom of the tube and around the cut angle section and set it into place on top of the power cell support box and butting up against the ramp. Glue a piece 51 on each flat section around the bottom edge of the cyclotron. The only place where we won't put one is on that section that has the tab. And yes, I know there's two tabs here on the video, but the one that's further up doesn't exist anymore. You should also have two 6mm thick piece 51s, one shorter than the other. Stick the shorter one on first, sitting it on top of the tab, and then the longer one on top of both of those. Make the battery pack from a stack of two piece 57s, cut one end at an angle, sand the angle if you didn't do a very good job cutting, and glue piece 58 over top of piece 57 to smooth everything out. Now glue the battery pack on the third segment over on the cyclotron. That's the segment that used to have the tab, but doesn't anymore. Okay, it's time to work a little bit on the grain elevator. Piece 52 gets a whole bunch of score lines cut across it. You want to make sure you only cut part way through the foam, not all the way. Heat it up with a heat gun which will cause those lines to widen just a little bit. And as it cools down, wrap it around a marker or something similar. This will help it hold that shape. Glue a piece 53 into each end and glue that unit onto the straight side of the grain elevator. Before you fully cut out piece 55, make 5 or 6 score lines across it, again not cutting through the foam. Heat it with a heat gun to open up the lines, finish cutting it out and glue it on top of piece 54. 
and glue that onto the other side of the grain elevator. Grab a low-quality Christmas pencil that no one wants to use, cut off the low-quality eraser, and wrap the pencil with some copper tape. You could also just use metallic paints, but I think this looks a bit more realistic. Cut a little hole at the top of the grain elevator, and stick your metalized pencil in the hole. Do the exact same thing with a shorter pencil, and stick it through a hole on the opposite side of the grain elevator. On the inside of the grain elevators, the two pencils should end up side by side. Drizzle them with some steaming hot glue to keep them in their place. Now you can glue the grain elevator onto the proton pack. On piece 50, which I like to call the ladder, cut three parallel V-grooves on each side to give it some texture. It's a bit too floppy as it is, so we need to add a bit of strength. So cut two V-grooves on the back side across the bottom and top rungs. Then you can cut a little toothpick or skewer and glue it in the slot. Grab some wooden dowels, trim the ends at an angle, and glue them vertically on each side of the ladder. Glue the ladder down onto the 2-inch ABS pipe. Cut four 1-inch PVC pipes, 55, 70, 115, and 121 millimeters long. Glue a 44 and an 18 on the 115 millimeter pipe, and just an 18 on the 121 millimeter. Glue a piece 56 on a 6 millimeter thick piece 18, and glue that on top of the 55 millimeter pipe, which gets glued right in here and the 70 millimeter right here. The 115 millimeter tube goes here, and the 121 millimeter tube goes here. Okay, all we have left is the cyclotron belt, so we're getting very close. Mark the V-cuts on the backs of pieces 59 and 60, and then glue piece 59 on top of piece 60. You want the longer side of piece 59 overlapping the shorter strip of piece 60. The V-cut you marked on P60 actually goes all the way through P60 and a little bit into P59. It doesn't need to be a really wide cut because it doesn't need to bend that far. This section of foam from the V-cut to the end gets turned into a ramp. Cut the other V-cut. Check to make sure you can match the angles of P62. Put some glue in the first V-cut and hold it in place till it cools, and then glue P62 to the side of the belt keeping the bottom edge of the belt flush with the bottom edge of piece 62. When you get up to the second V-cut, give it some glue and keep going. Repeat for the other side and you should end up with something that looks a bit like this. The other side of the belt is easier because there's no V-cuts, no angles, just a nice smooth curve. Grab a random circle you have laying around and glue it in the center of the cyclotron. Make a few markings so you know where the belt covers, and paint those areas black, because they're going to be really hard to access if you wait till later. Glue the belt down on top of the center disc, and on each side. Now make a stack of 42s and 43s, and glue that stack in the center of the belt. And that looks amazing. All right, this is looking absolutely fantastic, but I think we should probably stop right here because this video is probably getting a bit long. And I wanna make sure to get it out to you so you can at least get started before it's too late to get something done for Halloween. Good idea? I think so. Do you? Yes, you do. And then I'll do a second video to show how to paint it, add the wires, and hopefully the wand thing. I haven't designed that yet, but hopefully that'll work. So make sure you've subscribed and click that little bell icon so hopefully you'll be notified when I release part two of the video. Also, if you like just making costumes in general, you should check out my website or my YouTube channel because I've got lots of different costumes that might be fun to make for Halloween. Like maybe you need a Diver Knight costume. If you want to grab the pattern for this, there'll be a link somewhere up here and in the description. Right now the pattern is just this, but I'll be making updates to the pattern and anyone who's got the pattern will get those updates as well as I make more parts. I think that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching. See ya in my next video when I release it because you've rung the bell and you'll get notified, right? <laughs>